some words from Psalm 23, and that was a setting by John Rutter, which we'll hear more of later. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for forever. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, welcome again to uh, Sunday morning as we gather together to share worship together. And uh, what's lovely to know is that wherever we are in our communities, or in some cases well beyond our immediate communities, we are gathering together around bread and wine and coming together to worship together. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are most welcome to join us in this service. And I hope you hear something in this next few minutes that is able to sustain you through this week. And so as we come together, we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we are invited to come to God this morning and to offer ourselves to him. And we remember that our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins, in penitence and in faith. And we'll keep a few moments of silence as we gather ourselves afresh before God this morning. And so we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come together to pray our special prayer for today. 
the fourth Sunday of the season of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So we come to our scripture for this morning. And we have two readings. You've already heard some scripture from Psalm 23. And in this season, we always read from the book of Acts and we learn again about the birth of the early church. And so this is from Acts chapter 2 and beginning at verse 42. This tells us that the newly converted devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so to our Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And so from John chapter 10 and beginning at verse 1. And this is Jesus speaking. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we hear today of the Shepherd, Jesus, we pray that you would teach us, open our hearts to what you want to say to us at this time. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Well, readings today in which we might find some residence, that's reading from Acts. It follows on from the coming of the Holy Spirit with great power and also great gentleness, and it has changed people. Peter has proclaimed the good news of Jesus. He's explained that this Jesus whom they crucified and who had risen from the dead was the Messiah they had been looking for. And people believed what they heard and began to gather together. 
They gathered together in their homes. They broke bread together. They shared their possessions. They praised God and they grew in number. Their newfound faith changed the direction of their lives, changed their hearts and minds, and changed the way they lived and the ways in which they re related one to another. And later we hear of the church reaching out to the poor, meeting the needs of others. It was a church that had a kind of flow and movement in it. It wasn't easy though, even though at this time they were finding favour among the people. Persecution came quickly as authorities tried to suppress the faith of this new following that threatened the status quo. But it grew. The name of Jesus was on the lips of many. 2,000 years and more later, here we are in our homes, sadly not together. In many ways, forced into a new way of being, looking for the positives, but beginning to be more acutely aware of what really sustains us in our daily lives. Beginning to be aware of the losses of these days the loss of physicality and human connection, the loss of gathering together, the loss of shared communion. Seeing things through a screen is not quite the same, is it? But we're learning and we're growing because we are growing to discover that faith sustains us even when we can't meet, because Jesus sustains us. That human connection is vital to our well-being and that possessions are not the thing that we have made them to be. I don't know about you, but I've taken some of this time to ask myself the question, what do I really need to live well? What can I give away? And the signs are that a number of people are doing the same thing, judging by the number of things that are appearing in boxes at the bottom of people's drives to just take away. And this, I don't believe, is just an exercise in filling time. It's an exercise in realising that what we thought would bring us joy really didn't. Or if it did, the joy didn't last. The early followers of Jesus were discovering that too. Fellowship together was important. Praising God, sharing what they had and sharing the gospel became prominent features of their way of life. Many travelled very long and very light, and the gospel moved out of the confines of Jerusalem into the whole area through Europe and across the world. It's a gospel that's changed many lives and transformed our ways of being, and I believe we as followers of Jesus are being challenged again to discover what is really important to us in life, in faith, in our relationship with God, and in, in our relationship with people and to discover again afresh for ourselves the truth of the words of Jesus to us this morning. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So what is it to have life to the full? Sometimes um, in our translations of the Bible, abundant life. The abundant life is not about quantity or wealth or success or, or approval. It's not about popularity or security or being number one or any of the things that sometimes we think it is. The abundant life is quality, not quantity. It is a life that gives. It is a life that has meaning. It is about living out the life of God that is nurtured within. It's about allowing God to transform by his spirit and to bring meaning integrity, purpose, creativity, relationship and wholeness. The abundant life adds to the life of others and to the world. It's life that leads us to love in a way that breaks down barriers, that leads us to joy when the circumstances don't lead us that way. A life that leads us to sacrificial kindness, a life that radiates beauty and hope and generosity and peace, and a life that, in the words of Michael Marshall, does not add to the pain of the world, but brings healing. If that is the life we seek, then following Jesus and accepting his invitation into the sheepfold 
is the way to live. And that means that we have to open the gate of our own lives to him, who later in John's Gospel speaks of himself as the Good Shepherd. There's much imagery of good and bad shepherding in the Bible. I guess the most famous is that of the 23rd Psalm, an image of God who revives and leads and nurtures and protects, an image of God who leads by quiet waters and restores, and who gives us the courage we need so that we're not overcome by the valley of the shadow of death, who is generous and provides the reassurance of knowing that we will never be left alone and never abandoned, and that when we go astray, we will recognise the voice that calls us back, because there are thieves and bandits who seek to steal from us that which God has given to us. And those thieves and bandits come in different ways and by different means. Many of you know I have two cats, Smork and Mindy, only now it seems I might have three cats. The third looks very like Mindy. Somehow this third cat, I don't know where she's from, keeps stealing into the house. I have discovered her in the airing cupboard, eating from the food bowls, charging out of the house chased by my two, and yesterday climbing through one of the most inaccessible windows in the house. She is stealthy, but alluring. Thieves are stealthy. We don't know they have been until later, when we wake up and realise. They come when we're unaware, just like the thief of the abundant life, and it is easy to be allured. And how does that happen? I think it happens when we take God and people and things for granted. Perhaps we're beginning to realise some things about our own lives that we took relationships for granted. We became complacent and believed that life would always be this good. We became too comfortable or too busy or too preoccupied by the wrong things. We believed that our churches would always be open, so it wouldn't matter if we missed a week or two, because no one would miss us. The truth is, we missed you. We became complacent and believe that nothing would come to disrupt our gathering together. And our abundant lives were stolen. Our faith was stolen. We stopped listening to the voice that we know is Jesus and we lost our way. So many voices rattle around in us and yet we know the voice of Jesus because it calls us to love and to wisdom and compassion and generosity and beauty and joy and hope. For that is the voice of abundant life, and it is the voice to invest in, to give our time to, and for us to accept his invitation to come and to follow him. The more I sit in green pastures and quiet waters, the more I realise the opportunity have, we have at this time to deepen our walk with God and with each other. The key is not to allow the thief to steal it from us. Invest in this time in Jesus. Listen to his voice because he is calling you. Shall we pray? prayer that I've picked up over this last few days and weeks and a prayer to reflect on before we move into our time of intercessory prayer. Let's take a moment, shall we, a moment to be still and to hear the voice of Jesus calling us. We are not people of fear, we are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed, we are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving, wherever we are, 
whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. And so we continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning for our risen Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who seeks out and saves all who are lost. We pray for all who are walking in the valley of the shadow at this time. We pray for all who are struggling in hospital. We pray for all who are at home waiting for news. We pray for those who are anxious. We, are, we pray for those who are lonely and alone. Lord, we pray that they might find that in the midst of this time, you are calling them to a place of peace to a place of abundant life and to a place of wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are being shepherds to others at this time, for those who are seeking to protect and to nurture and to bring healing and to bring wholeness. We continue to pray for all those in our National Health Service, for all those who are making our hospitals work, for those in the background and those on the front line. We pray for all those in our care homes, in our nursing homes. We pray, Lord, for those in our hospices, and we pray for all key workers. Lord, we pray that they might be agents and ambassadors of love, of compassion, of kindness and of unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those today who cannot pray for themselves. For those who have lost memory or reason. We pray for all who are facing death. Lord, may we pray for those who have no one to pray for them. Lord, may each one know that the Good Shepherd walks this journey with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, may we continue to learn to abide in you and know that you abide in us. May we know that nothing separates us from you. And we pray for all who have passed through darkness and entered life and light everlasting. Lord, may we with them inherit a place in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So normally in our church service at this time, we would share the peace one with another. So can I uh, encourage you to call to mind someone or some a group of people that you haven't seen in a while, that you haven't spoken to in a while. They may be in your church, they may not be in church at all. They may be in a different church, but call them to mind and in your mind's eye, share the peace with them. 
the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we come to a time in which we bless bread and wine. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy at all to always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For the, by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of eternal life. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so we pray together. 
most merciful Lord. Your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who live his risen life bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before I do um, the blessing, uh, just to say to you that at seven o'clock this evening, rather than Compline, what we're going to do is we're going to share together in a service of healing prayer. You'll need a link from me to enable you to join in that because we're going to do it by Zoom. Uh, so if you want to contact me this afternoon, then I will send you the link. Uh, then uh, at 11 o'clock on Tuesday this week, we'll be having a coffee morning again via Zoom. So if you want to uh, join in with the coffee morning again, just ask me for a link. And then we had a, a very lovely tea service on uh, Thursday last week, led by Chris and Eleanor. And they'll be leading another tea service at 230 um, on Thursday and again by Zoom, so you will need another link. So, thank you for joining together this morning. It's lovely to be able to share together. I wish you a good rest of Sunday and a good uh, rest of the week until we see each other again. A final blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and with everyone you love and for everyone you connect with this day and always. Amen. Live in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>